welcome everybody to Candlelight Yin Yoga. We're gonna hunker down and stay a little while um, in some poses. We're gonna do kind of a, a focus on back bends in general. Um, so we're gonna start in the opposite way. So we'll start laying on our back and I'm gonna do a butterfly shape with my legs and I'm gonna do a little bit of an elevation. So to kind of get the back bend started, I'm gonna put a block under my shoulder blades and a block under my head. If you don't have yoga blocks, throw pillows like this work really great and you can even do the throw pillow on the diagonal so that your head is supported and then kind of the shoulders go across the broader part of the pillow and then it sort of tapers down towards the, um, your spine. Especially if your pillow tends to be a little bit more firm in the center than it is on either end, that can be quite pleasant actually. And then you may want some support underneath your legs. And I am going to achieve that with one of these um, long, uh, it's pretty skinny. Um, this is a bolster and these are um, the fancier yoga props. <laughs> uh, you, you know, most of like average, you know, just folks who know, mostly practice have or have been practicing mostly in a gym may not have something like this. This is kind of an investment piece. So if you have a couch cushion, they work really great in place of this. They're a little wider, clearly, but it's pretty close to the same amount of squishiness. So they work pretty good. So you can grab one of those, or you can stick a blanket underneath your legs or under your knees, whatever you'd prefer. Now, in terms of blocks, if you determine that it's a good idea to invest in yoga blocks, and I'll just suggest to you as kind of a thought that um, probably for the next year or even two or maybe longer, you're probably not gonna be doing any sharing of yoga props, right? We've all gotten really used to doing classes in the outside world and being able to share props because it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> like, the worst thing that was gonna happen was that we would get something like the flu, but now the worst thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna kill each other. And so <laughs> probably these aren't gonna be available as shareable items. So if you wanna make an investment in props and you don't know what to do, you can leave me a comment um, if you're watching this on YouTube, or you can send me um, on any of my social medias, just ask me what props I would recommend, and I'm happy to give you, like engage in a discussion with you to help you choose the right kind of props, because I think it's a good investment for your practice. Now, lecture aside, <laughs> you can take a yoga block and put it down the length of your spine like this, right? I like mine going across ways usually when I do this, because the blocks are quite firm, and the least amount of surface area is better in my opinion. So what I do is I put the block on the shortest height. Some blocks are two inches high. This one is four inches. So it's a little bit higher up and I put my shoulder blades on the block so that the bottom edge of the block is about an inch or so below the bottom edge of my shoulder blades. So I get a little bit of block, shoulder blades on the block, you know, they might like kind of be off to the side, but mostly that's gonna support my back quite nicely. Now, if you're a guy and you've got a big broad back, um, you might need to use something other than a yoga block or maybe two even, might be better. So you can experiment with that, like two done. The narrow way might be perfect for a broad shouldered uh, fella. Um, the girls in the audience, <laughs> ladies, um, might find one block is enough. So you just may have to experiment a little bit. We're gonna stay a while, so it's worth the experiment. Now, in terms of supporting my head, I put this block right under the back part of my skull so that it holds my chin mostly in a level position. Um, I like the block a little higher for the head than I do for the shoulders, right? It just creates a little bit of a structure that's more pleasant and it gives me the option of kind of figuring out where my head goes. Sometimes if I have the block too low because this is quite firm, um, or I put the block even at the same level, sometimes it feels like my head leans back. So you experiment because you might be different in the way that your body hits these props, okay? So here's how I've set it up. I've got one block in front, four inches. The second block behind that, six inches. This one's gonna go under my head. So I'm gonna lie down over them and adjust them. So oh, I'm gonna try to aim at it so that I can feel the little bony part of my shoulder blade just up on top of this block got my hair in a knot and I could probably sque squeak the block under it. I'm going to go ahead and untie the knot. And then, so for me, I don't know if you can see this, but like instead of having my chin tucked down or my chin lift up, I'm going to try to find the spot where it's right on the level. And that works pretty well when I have one block higher. If I put this guy lower, it's harder.
harder for me to get my chin level without using a lot of muscle in my neck. It wants to tilt up. So again, check it out for you. Now this, I will tell you, is not a Lazy Boy recliner. It is a little bit awkward, but when it's in the right spot, it doesn't feel horrible. It feels a little, a little weird, <laughs> like a little pushy, but it doesn't feel bad. So if it feels really terrible, the block is probably too low or too high. And so adjust it until you're like, oh yeah, that's better. <laughs> and that'll be the right spot. If you never find that spot, take the block out, do it without. All right, now, second piece of business here. If I keep my arms relatively close to my body, and I'm not hugging them up against me because that makes my shoulder roll forward, but instead if I just go like that and let the arm drop oh, wherever it would naturally land, that makes the stretch happen deeper in my shoulder so that the little supporting muscles that hold my shoulder blades in place and my arm bone in place is the joint. Those are the muscles that are actually going to get the work. Now those muscles do not have a lot of nerve endings. So this is not a big stretch feel. It's very subtle. Um, it does, I do notice the difference. Now if I want a big stretch feeling, especially across the chest muscles, if I take my arms out wide to the side, then I can really feel that stretch across the pec. And if you've got tight pecs, you'll feel that stretch. You may even want to elevate your arms up on a pillow or a blanket to accommodate that. If your elbows don't touch the floor, you can elevate. Um, you can put something underneath you so you have like little arm rests as well. Okay, and then last thing is I put my feet together, knees are open, support under my knees so that the sensation in my inner thighs is there, but it's not particularly intense, right? <sighs> so here we shall remain for a period of time. And you can let go of the world and just breathe. Check in with yourself just a wee bit. And notice if you're holding on with any tension. Are you, it's almost like you're trying to pick yourself up off a bed of nails, right? You know, the face might be a little tight in between the eyebrows or around the temple area. There might be some tension around your lips or your jaw. There might be kind of a sense that you're trying to hold your shoulders or arms in a particular way. So if any of those things are true, make little adjustments, to, even if it's just like a little oh, snuggling under of your shoulder blades, sometimes a little adjustment about halfway through feels really nice. And that's where we're going to land tonight, just, just gonna stay for about two more minutes. If you are realizing, oh, I need to get the blocks out, or I need to change my pose, or I need to do a little bit of movement. I would suggest going with whatever your instincts are. Yin yoga in general is a little more quiet and a little more static, but that doesn't mean that we're holding ourselves still. What we're doing is allowing for stillness when it's appropriate, okay? So if your instinct is, oh, I need to move a little bit, go with it. Now, if it's fidgety, because you don't hold still very often, notice that. It doesn't mean you shouldn't move. But 
it's good to start to learn about your little button pushes and what it is that sort of, you know, stimulates you to want to fidget. Sometimes it's a worthy goal or a worthy endeavor which is um, to let yourself feel that urge to fidget and then not fidget, right? Sometimes it's more appropriate to move. I have no way of knowing which one is the right answer for you, so you'll have to experiment and see what happens. <laughs> it's a worthwhile endeavor. finish out the minute. We've got about 30 seconds left. Whatever's happening right now, just notice your breath again. take the knees and bring those together first and then if you have something under your legs you can go ahead and just slide that out to the side for now and then with whatever you've got under your upper back you're gonna go up, come off of that nice and slow so I'm gonna start with this guy that's under my head and then kind of roll into my side oh, I'm gonna try to get this guy out from under going to come back onto the back. Now, oh, that feels so good. All right. So that slight discomfort or slightly weird feeling of being up on the blocks for me has now been re replaced by this feeling of my upper back spreading out like a giant prairie of upper back from sea to shining sea. <laughs> it's just beautifully wide and soft feeling. And I really enjoy this sensation and it feels like because I kept my arms a little closer and didn't go for the spicier sensation in the pecs what I've got instead is the sense that my arm bone has just fallen back into the socket a little bit now I'm accustomed to it feeling like my arm bone rolls forward there's a bunch of reasons for that I won't get into all of those but um, but it because of that sensation of my arm bone kind of almost always feeling like it's trying to rotate forward in my shoulder joint, this sensation of it falling backward is very nice. Um, it's very, again, it's a very subtle sensation, but I find a, almost like there's an ease brought to the top of my shoulder. I have these muscles up here, we, we all have these same muscles, but these muscles up here on the upper shoulder that are called the trapezius muscles, and they move down through the back. They go almost from your, um, from your pelvis, almost, from your pelvis all the way to the top of your um, back of your skull, right? They travel a good distance in the back, but the biggest place where we feel them is right here at the top of the shoulder because the muscle rolls over itself um, and it's really thick and ropey up at the top of the shoulder. So that muscle for me, because of my kind of little postural habits and things I've developed over time, that muscle is quite tight. And so what happens when I'm on the blocks is it feels like that muscle gets really soft and when I reach up to palpate it, it's way softer than it normally is. And so I find this really pleasant. Now, that being said, notice what's happening in your body because this is really important. <laughs> it's like, see what the poses do to you because you want to know. <laughs> Am I going to do that pose again in the future? Am I going to chuck that out and do something different? Okay. Now, we're gonna bring the knees into the chest, and to start with, we're just gonna give the sacrum and the low back 
a little bit of a rock, just rock back and forth. So if I bring my knees in a little tighter, I get up above the top rim of my pelvis in my low back area. If I let my knees hang out about over my belly button or over my pelvis, then I get the sacrum, which lives between the two um, ilium of my hips, okay? Now, we're gonna do a happy baby pose. Now you can do this like this, where you keep the toes together and you just hang out, or you can do this like this, where you hold onto the big toe and let the arm kind of drape, or you can do it like this, either on the inside or on the outside where you hold onto the foot, okay? I'm gonna go for big toes. I'm gonna take my peace on fingers, I'm gonna hold my big toes, and I'm gonna let my knees fall in towards my armpits. Now for me, this has some spice to it, especially <laughs> when you hold it for a while. For a couple of seconds, this pose is quite pleasant. Not very attractive, but super pleasant. But when we hold it for a bit, we're gonna stay for about two minutes. So we're already 20 seconds into this pose, so it's not crazy. <laughs> but um, in any case, when we hold it for a little bit, you'll start to notice these kind of places in your hips or in your knees that might be a little tighter. It's sort of like um, squatting upside down, basically. So some of the benefits we get from squatting poses, um, we get also from this happy baby. So for future reference, because there will be a squat in our life tonight. Um, <laughs> so for future reference, if you want to skip the squat, which is going to be the next thing we do, you can come back to this because <laughs> we're going to do it for about the same amount of time. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll throw that out there for your perusal. <laughs> so we're going to stay for about another minute here, y'all. Again, you can drop your hands down, grab hold of your ankles. We got about two more deep breaths. All right, so you're gonna let go of your feet. We're gonna take the feet to the floor. Oh, nice and easy now. And then we're gonna pause for a second. <laughs> I start with these little windshield wipers, but ooh, I gotta go gently, right? Because that is really quite intense for me in the groin and inner thigh. And then I'm gonna let myself go all the way straight and do a little bit of a jiggle, a little bit of movement. Now, eventually what's gonna happen, yogis, is we're gonna come up to an all fours position, which will then take us into a squatting position. Now, with that in mind, if you would like to do some cat cows or a little downward dog or something along that line first, you can do that, all right? If you know <laughs> the squatting pose is not going to be for you, you have tried squatting in the past, you know it sucks, you can stay right where you are, do a little movement, and then just do that happy baby a second round, okay? So that's your alternative. So another possibility is that you can squat into kind of a structure, a little bit of support. So what you can do, coming back to your yoga blocks, if you've got two of them, or one, some people only need one, is you can build kind of like a little, a little um, seat for yourself. So this is like, you know, this is like a medium sized seat. If I turned it like this, right, <laughs> it would be a little taller. I don't recommend doing it like this, although you can, um, but this is a little, not very sturdy. If you have the bottom one a little on the wider side, it makes for a sturdier seat, okay? So this is a possibility for future reference. All right, while we're kind of doing some things and getting ourselves into this position where we're gonna do a squat, 
is um, you can also grab like a scarf like this one or you can grab a yoga strap if you happen to have one of those because we'll use that as well okay so I'm gonna get myself on my feet oh. I'm gonna <laughs> start with this kind of rocking back and forth between this sort of wide angle downward dog and a little kind of baby squat because <laughs> I'm gonna get into the squat in a second and so here's how this could work right is that you could basically sit down on your blocks and then you are in a squat okay or you can do it without the blocks and hang out so I'm gonna do one minute with the blocks and one minute without the blocks we're gonna stay for two minutes and so you come into your squatting pose your legs can be as wide apart as you like for some people, the heels won't touch the floor, so you can put something under your heels. You can rest your hands on the floor. And again, we've been here for about 20 seconds, so that's not too crazy. We're gonna stay for another minute and a half. And so just putting the legs in this position, even if I'm not really squatting, right? I'm sitting on the blocks. But just getting my legs in this position is still a good practice for me. It's still something that kind of, maybe I don't do this every day, right? I don't squat, I sit in chairs more often. Okay, so I'm gonna knock my little block out of my way and just come into the squat full for my second minute here. And if this is too spicy, you go back to your little chair, right on. how things are going because we got two breaths left. Now, big inhale. You might have to shift your weight a little bit forward into your hands to get your legs all the way straight, but that's where we're going next. Now, for those of you that stayed with the happy baby, you can join us here if you like, or you can do a seated forward bend if you'd prefer to do that. Okay, now here's one option. And that is, I'm going to show you this sideways, and that is to take a scarf or a yoga strap and put it between your hands, and then while we dangle here for the first minute, you can do this little shoulder opener. You might be able to do it for the whole two minutes that we're going to hang upside down here. Now you can also, incidentally, like rest your elbows on your thighs, especially if it's not cool for your head. Like, the whole body to hang upside down or your hamstrings are just really really tight <laughs> so you can do it that way I've got a pretty good size like my hands are pretty wide apart so that this pose is I can feel it and it's a little spicy but it's not too spicy right then I'm gonna do this for the first bit and then I'm going to just dangle upside down for the second minute. And I've got about two more breaths and then I'm going to let this go. So I've just gone a little bit further over my head. My shoulder said I could. <laughs> and then I'm gonna let this just kind of gently come around and just dangle my arms. I like the feeling of kind of letting the, letting the skull just kind 
because I hang in the <laughs> in this position, my neck. You know, spends a lot of time holding up my giant brain. <laughs> so I just give it a little break. <laughs> Two more breaths here. <laughs> So we're going to come back down to the knees. Oh, you can come through a little downward dog if that sounds like a plan. And you and down dog are friends. And you can decide whether you want to bring your right knee forward or your left knee forward. And again, yoga blocks are helpful, but not necessary. You can do it without the blocks. You can use furniture. I like to use the bolsters and pillows and things like that as well. And then what I'm doing, because we're gonna stay here for a pretty good amount of time, about four minutes, is I'm just kind of letting myself back off just a little bit until I feel just barely the beginning of sensation. And if I prop myself up a little bit more, then I get into some different connective tissue in the belly and in between. So that feels kind of nice. This is just, you know, a soft little arm rest for me. I'll do the second half of this pose a little closer to the ground. You can do anything you want. Your hands can rest on the floor. Your elbows can rest on the floor. You can be all the way up. You can take your hands behind your back and use that scarf or towel or whatever you had earlier. You can use that again. Feeling like a little bit of a softening here, right? So I'm letting my hip come a little bit further forward. We got a little bit more, a few breaths before we get to the halfway mark. We're just exploring that out. If I get a message from my hip that says, whoa, I'll back it back off. My intention is to get down onto my elbows. We're gonna see how this goes. <laughs> that, is, that is gonna be my intention. Now, to make that a little more Accommodating. I'm going to put this pillow underneath my thigh and this pillow underneath my chest so that as I come down here with my hip, I've got a little bit of structure to lean it. <laughs> and then for me, sometimes now this becomes a little spicier around the inner thigh, right? and groin of the other leg. So this leg is a little spicy, this leg is a little spicy. So now there's just a little shift in the sensation, just paying attention to what you get. seconds yogis you're doing great So we're going to take a really big breath. We're going to let go with a really big ah. All right, now we're going to back ourselves up to about halfway, okay? So we get this hip over this knee, right on. 
Now this leg is going to stay straight out in front of us and we're going to essentially sit down onto the floor. If you need to get all the way out of this and just sit on the floor, that's fine. Here's what I'm going to do. You can do this with a throw pillow, but I'm going to take this long pillow and stick it right there underneath my hip so that I have, and then I'm going to use this block. Okay? So I've got a little bit of a landing pad to take myself down to the ground. <laughs> Now this leg is still folded underneath me. I'm gonna bring that as far forward as it's willing to come. And for me, my foot will not touch my thigh. So if your foot nestles right up against your thigh, you're gonna be fine in this pose going straight back. But if you're like me and you've got a little bit of a gap here, we need to go to a diagonal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little bit over here to this side with my hip, okay? so that I'm bringing my hip around and lining it up more with my knee. Now this is enough for me because I feel a stretch right here. Some people are gonna need to lay all the way onto their back in order to feel the stretch right here on the top of the thigh. But once you feel something there, that's the pose, my friends. Now if the top of your ankle is tricky, you can put a blanket under your shin. I really like the way that feels. And so you can go for that. We're gonna be here for about the same length of time that we were in the lunge, about four minutes. And we've already done a whole minute, so we're, you know, three minutes now. <laughs> now this doesn't take, always take that long for me. Um, this sometimes will start to get softer, especially on this leg. So as it gets a little softer, I might go back down to, or I might go try to go down to my elbow. Me and the plant, though, behind me might have a disagreement about space relations. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Right now, I don't need to do anything more because I still feel this little stretch right in here, especially down here where the connective tissue is a little thicker. So that's really all that I need right now. Loves, we are at that sort of just, uh, just shy. Got about a minute and a half left, so just shy of a minute left. A little bit more than that oh, is what I'm trying to say. So because you've got just about a minute left, I'm going to go all the way back here on my elbow because, oh, I think I'm ready for that little extra spiciness. four deep breaths. Now, when, oh, we're going to take one more big breath, but when you're done, if you're laying all the way on your back, you can bring your legs together really tight 
and roll to your side. If you're in a position that's more akin to what I'm doing, you can come all the way up. So big breath. Exhale, hug in your inner thighs a little bit and come all the way up to sitting or roll to your side. And then we're going to get uh, that leg out from under there. And you're going to give yourself a moment to rinse it out. Oh. What's next is the other side. <laughs> so we're going to come up to the lunge again. Now, I had my right leg forward and my left leg back last time. So I'm going to switch that around and do my left leg forward and my right leg back this time. So, I'm going to find that spot. And again, it might be that you want to be more upright or you might want to be more close to the ground. And again, I'm going to do kind of a hybrid, a little half and half. Now for me, the right side is spicier than the left side. It's a little more tight. And I don't need as much forward motion in my hips to start to feel this. So I'm going to stay here maybe a little bit longer. I might also add additional support underneath my hip when I move forward so that I'm at an appropriate amount of close to the ground for the second side. Or so into our pose, which is a good time to kind of notice how am I doing? Am I doing all right? And if it feels like, yeah, this is the right amount of sensation, then cool, that's your sensation. And if it feels like you need to add on to it a little bit or take away from it a little bit, usually it takes me a good minute to know for sure. or halfway mark. I'm just living, giving myself permission to kind of lean forward into this a little bit more and see how it's feeling. I'm going to put a block underneath my hip on this side because I know it will be a little more structured and sturdy. And then I can use the pillow under the upper part instead. As, as a group, as a team, <laughs> if you are saying to yourself, I don't need one more minute here, you can leave. No one's holding you there. You're at your house. You can do what you want. And again, you might just back off a little bit or go back to all fours. For me, this takes this long for it to really start to feel good. So I'm definitely staying a little longer. We're almost there, though.
take a really big breath. Let go with a really big sigh. And then we're going to come up. And just kind of ease everything back to that point where you're kind of on all fours. And again, I'm going to use this pillow to kind of create a transition space. And then I'm going to ease myself back here. So I know I have to go slightly to the side because my foot won't nestle right underneath me. So I do that little adjustment. Bring my leg as close to the midline and as far up as I can bring it, right? As far forward and in. And that's where it is. So to start with, I'm just going to lean this way a little bit and hang out with this. Then I might wind up going down onto the block a little more with my hand, but I'm just feeling out how spicy is this top of my thigh. And monitoring that sensation level before I decide how far I'm going. Again, so that's kind of like I'm right about the minute and a half mark. We're getting pretty close to that mark. So this is that point where for me I know, like, is this going to be okay? <laughs> and I'm feeling like I need to go just a little bit more this way with my body weight. Just a little bit less pressure on my ankle. you laying straight back onto the floor might be perfect. So you're welcome to adjust this whole shape as needed so that you have the right amount for you. this point where we've got just a little over a minute left, right? A minute, 20 seconds or so. So how's it going for you? <laughs> Are you prepared to stay another minute? Are you holding lots of tension in your body? Right? Notice, like pay attention. Mm. Make good choices for yourself because you're the one who's living in here with this stretch and the sensation in your hip and your knee and your back and everything else. take three more deep breaths. And this is the big one, big breath. And again, you might glue your thighs together and roll to your side because I'm already almost sitting. I'm going to sit up first and then lean and let my leg unwind and then oh. you just pause. And you might might feel nice to just shake things out a little bit, massage your kneecap a little bit. We'll leave you to your own devices to work that out. So both of those poses are technically back nuts, 
movement. So they like allowed us to kind of open the chest a little bit, open the front of the hip. You can kind of stay in that vein with the swan pose, which you might know better as pigeon pose. In the yin world, things have new names. <laughs> but um, what I'm going to show you is um, called the square pose, which in some um, camps is called double pigeon or fire logs pose. And that's what I'm going to do. But you can substitute that for the swan if you would like to. Again, you might know that better as pigeon, where one leg is forward and the other leg is straight back, and that straight back leg gives us more of this kind of back bendy sensation. Okay. So to do this uh, square pose, I've got a handful of props, I've got some pillows, I've got some yoga blocks, these are usually what I need. Blanket doesn't hurt, okay? So then one leg goes on the floor so that the thigh kind of points as best you can directly forward. And I'll show you an alternative in a second, but I'm gonna talk you through this one first. And then this thigh we're gonna bring up on top so that again, the thighs point forward and then there's a square here, okay? So for some people, this is a fantastic shape. This shape works really well for my joints. Now what I do like to do, because this bony part of my ankle pushes into the tender skin of, or tender flesh of my inner thigh, is I like to put a block right in front of my knee and shift my ankle onto the block so that the bony part doesn't poke right there. I still get the same sensation here, pardon me, the same, same sensation here and here, just less bony. Possibility number two is that you actually bring the knees in and stack them closer to being on top of each other. And for some hip um, anatomy, that one's gonna be a better pose. You can also let your leg go out a little more towards the top, or even do this with one leg that's straight and one leg that's bent. And then you'll switch. Just make sure that your knee is okay with whatever choice you make for yourself, or both knees as the case may be. And then pillows or blankets can go in to help support the body, okay? Underneath the knee, underneath this knee, wherever they need to be. You can make little stacks of yoga props to rest your head on if you want to do that. One of my favorite things is to get a finger in between each toe so that uh, I start to sort of stretch out makes the mu these muscles that live in between the big bones in my foot, these are called metatarsals, it makes those bones kind of release a little bit, the, connect the tissue between them. So it feels like my foot is a little softer, a little broader, and the arches have a little more um, uh, um, I'm trying to think of what the word is I'm looking for. It's like responsiveness, but that's not quite the word, but that's the idea. They just sort of have, it's like they have a little more freedom um, to adapt to whatever it is I'm walking over. Um, sometimes when the connective tissue in my feet gets really stiff, my arches then can't adapt and adjust to, I like to be barefoot, <laughs> so they don't adapt and adjust to my walking around outside on the grass and uh, barefoot gardening. <laughs> which is one of my favorite summertime activities, but in any case, um, they just don't adjust as well. So I you know, wind up with um, some soreness or that sort of thing. But if I do these little stretches with my fingers between my toes, the soreness goes away. So you can experiment with that in your own life or not worry about it. <laughs> now we've been here for almost our half of our pose at this point just shy of that by about 20 seconds. So we're gonna stay for a couple more minutes. And if you're realizing that you wanna leave the pose a little earlier, or maybe you're just realizing, oh, I was holding things tight, maybe you can just let those things go. Maybe your breath got a little shallow, you come back to a deeper, smoother breath. I'm leaning a little bit more forward because I feel like things have adjusted a little bit in here and are letting me go forward a little more.
I'm, we're gonna save her one more minute as a team. Again, you might decide you need to come out of your pose. That's fine. Um, then we're gonna make a little adjustment. So those of us who are doing this shape, like with what I'm kind of set up here where we're seated, we have one set of instructions. Those of you that decided to go for the swan pose, you'll have another set of instructions. I'll do my best to talk you through them. But for now, if you need to come out, come out, but otherwise just breathe. We've got about 30 seconds left. Not quite that long, but. Now, if you're doing the swan, you're gonna take a big breath. You're gonna lean into the hip that's bent and then you're gonna bring your back leg around and put it up in front or on top in some fashion. Now, those of us that are doing this, we're gonna sit up tall. You could bring this knee up if you want to. I'm gonna leave it right where it is and then we're gonna to twist towards it and we'll hold this for a minute, okay? So we're only gonna be in this pose for one minute, but if this it was spicy for your hips, to begin with, it might be another minute of spiciness. So if you need to release the legs or loosen the legs, do. Nice deep breaths, yogis. We're almost there. Take a really big inhale. And as you exhale, we're just gonna unwind everything. Lean back and unwind your legs. Oh. And before we do the other side, we're gonna give this a little opportunity for shakeout. Do you need to do some interpretive dance? I am not gonna stop you. <laughs> Guess what, yogis? That's right. We're gonna do the other side. <laughs> Hopefully you were prepared for that. So we're gonna take your other side of your, whatever you were doing. Were you doing a swan? Then you're gonna do that. Were you following me into the square pose or some equivalent? And that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> so we're gonna find our way in here, yogis. might be leaning forward into this. Maybe we're not. Maybe you're going to stick a finger in between each of your toes and try to get those babies to loosen up. This foot feels fantastic. I want that foot to feel just as good. <laughs> oh. You'll find your way in here. going out there, yogis. Doing all right. <laughs> Just take a 
taking nice deep breaths. By now you should know whether you're settled in just right or not. You need to make a little adjustment. through yogis. Notice the quality of your breath. Maybe this is the minute where you pull the escape hatch, get them out of it for a little bit before we do the next part of this. And if it's still feeling kind of great, don't go anywhere yet, right? Maybe you can give into it a little bit more if it's still feeling pretty great. See what happens. Don't be too pushy. <laughs> You're gonna take ooh, two more big breaths. The people in the swan ooh, are coming out of their swan and bringing their back leg around and the rest of us are sitting up. Maybe you unwind this whole thing, bring your knee up, or maybe you just sit up nice and tall and twist around to the other side. Feels kind of weird, doesn't it? <laughs> Breaths, yogis. Take a big breath. And we're gonna let this whole thing go. And we're gonna lean back and unwind our legs. And then you're gonna put them out in front of you and give them a jiggle. Now, yogis, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty good in my legs and my hips. It's feeling all really good. 
Now the question you have to ask yourself is, do I want to fold forward with my feet straight out in front of me and legs close together? Do I want to come back to the shape I did at the very beginning and fold over my legs with the butterfly shape? Or do I want to take my legs out in a V shape and fold over my the center right here where the legs are. And that is a choice that only you can make, my friends. So you're gonna need to choose one of those. And the good news is that this pose is gonna be the last pose before we do some nice things on our back. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> so we're gonna make this pose kind of a multifaceted pose, like kind of like we did with the last one. Gonna spend the bulk of our time folding straight down the center, but then we'll give a little um, side bending love. We did twisty love last time, we'll do a little side bending love at the end. So I've got my elbows propped up so I can just tilt forward. Now, for, again, if this pose isn't your pose because it makes you lean backwards, not forwards, pick one of the other options, see if they work better. Sometimes just a simple cross legged position folding over your legs is also fine, but it sort of mimics what we did last time. So the legs can be symmetrical, make them symmetrical. You know, as close as a human body will get. <laughs> Hang out with this shape. And if you need, you can build yourself a little structural support for your forehead. This is why I like to have a lot of yoga props. <laughs> I can do all kinds of things. <laughs> some props under the elbows, some props under the forehead, some props under the knees. The more the merrier on prop side, as far as props are concerned, as far as I go. Ooh. One of the things I like to do while I hold this shape, really, or any shape where I'm forward bending, is occasionally I'll wiggle my toes just to just check in and make sure. There are some nerves kind of in this area or laying on the thighs, especially if my legs are closer together and my body, the weight of my torso rests on my thighs. Um, those little nerves sometimes can get a little bit compressed and so I just check in, make sure my toes don't go numb. With this pose, it's a little less likely, but it feels, still feels good. Now, we're coming up on the last minute that we're gonna stay with this particular shape. So add some deeper breaths if you've got the notion to do so. Take a big breath. Now, I'm gonna pick a leg and I'm just gonna side bend over the leg and because we're only gonna be here a minute, I'm gonna let my arm drape over, but you can leave your arm down and even wrap the arm behind your back if that would feel better to you. And I also put my hand right there, oh yeah, that's good. breaths left. Last big breath here. So I'm going to reach with my left arm and just sort of use that as a little extra, oh, a little extra impetus to bring myself all the way up. Now I'm not going to do the other side right away. I'm going to let this sit for 30 seconds so that the fluid in my spine sort of readjusts where it came from. It takes about 20 to 30 seconds for me to feel that kind of shift back to normal. 
so then once that happens, you can go the opposite direction again. We're going to stay for about a minute. If you don't have the legs in a V, if you've got you know butterfly or you've got legs out front, same thing. You're just side bended. Just add that in. Sometimes when my legs are up front, it's a little wobblier. <laughs> so you might need like a block on this side to help hold you up. You can do it that way. <laughs> I forgot to mention that the first round. Take a really big breath. We're gonna oh, pull ourselves back up out of there. Then you gotta change your legs. Mine are straight. That means they gotta go bent. <laughs> if yours were bent, they're gonna go straight. And then, my friends, last or next to last part of our class, which is we're gonna lay on our backs. It's not quite Shavasana time yet, but close. <laughs> I'm going to keep a pillow and I'm going to keep a blanket. Those will come in handy. So once you have reclined on your back, you can, I'm going to use the blanket underneath my head, right? So I'm going to make myself a little pillow. So I'm going to put that down first. Then I'm going to recline onto my back. Oh. once down here <laughs> adjust myself so that my pillow is just right some people like the pillow like more under the shoulders I like mine just kind of right just a little cup of the back of my neck you can use just the edge of your yoga mat if you don't have a blanket all right this is not gonna be a very long shape but we're gonna come back to the twist we're gonna hold it so we're gonna lay on the, or bring the knees up if you like, and we're gonna lay on the back to do this twist. So pick a side, I'm gonna take my legs to the right, and I've taken this pillow and put it underneath the bottom leg so that I can drop the top leg over. And again, we're not gonna stay very long, so we're gonna make this slightly more yang than yin. I'm gonna let gravity pull me this way, and I'm gonna actively let my arm reach out to the side so I get a little bit more of a stretchy stretch through the chest, and this outer hip's getting a little bit of love too. Now, if you don't want the pillow there, don't put the pillow there. We're gonna stay here for about five or six more big breaths. Now on my exhales, I'm trying to let myself ooh, sink, like almost like I'm sinking into wet sand and then powering that inhale up a little bit and then letting the exhale really be soft. So I'm feeling that interplay of yin and yang through the breath also. That kind of releasing quality of the yin one more time. Now I'm gonna bring my arm back a little and I'm gonna bring my top leg and then my bottom leg back. Oh, and then pause right there and you can, I'm gonna do this kind of wide position with my feet and just go back and forth a little bit. Mm. Mm. It's feeling nice, yogis. <laughs> it's feeling pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna do the other side. So I'm gonna bring my pillow across. position that so that when I bring my knees over, I can kind of hook my top leg a little bit over towards the empty space that's over here. And then moving my arm around my plant a little bit, I'm going to see if I can kind of let gravity and then my intention of rolling my shoulder blade towards the ground. It's a little bit of core work really is all that I'm using to make this happen. So kind of actively 
engaging the muscles that help roll my rib cage into a twist and letting gravity do the work with my legs. I'm trying to be as soft as I, I can here and a little more active right here in the center. Powering up the inhale, letting the exhale really turn into a complete surrender. to the center, bringing my arm to the center, starting with this top leg, bottom leg. Now yogis, it's time for Shavasana. This is the best part. So we're going to take, if you want, you're going to stretch your legs out, but you can take a pillow. And like You can make your pillow a little on the high side so that it's almost like your legs remain in this bridge shape, or you can do it a little bit lower like that. So that the legs are a little closer to the ground. You don't have to have anything under your legs, but it, sometimes for me it helps take a little bit of the pressure out of my low back. So if you have any reason to have um, or feel like your low back tends to arch when you lay on the floor, put something under your thighs or maybe under the knees. For me it's the thighs. Now you could go more in the cactus-y shape with your arms or you can come back to that position where the arms are sort of more in anatomical position. Whatever's going to feel like your shoulder really is able to let go. Make sure your head feels like it's adjusted just right. And then we're going to stay a while. And this is the ultimate yin pose, really, Shavasana. It's just a pose about letting go. And in, a, in a more active yoga class, it's sort of like little yin cherry on top of the whole yang Sunday. <laughs> but for our purposes, it's just a continuation of the same thing we've been up to. It's kind of active letting go into a shape. This one is not so spicy. start with a few deep breaths and then I like to let the breath just do its thing.
knees. <laughs> really gently, just notice that your body is breathing. You can gently open your eyes, take a moment, just feel, and then really slowly just start to wiggle your fingers and toes, and then stretch them apart. Give your wrist and ankle a little movement. And you can give your whole body a stretch however you like. Oh. Give yourself one more little back massage. And then, my friends, we're going to eventually come to a seated position. You might want to lay on your side for a bit <laughs> before finally sitting up. Oh. I always need a transition space. <laughs> We're gonna take a really big breath together and let go with a really deep sigh. And we're gonna let ah that sound escape our mouths. Nice big inhale. Ah. And enjoy the rest of your night. Mm. Namaste. Bye you.